guys, let's make the Blue Waves baby blanket. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make my Blue Waves baby blanket. It's very beautiful, very detailed, but super easy to do, and I can't wait to get started. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, trying to keep it fresh, trying to keep it interesting so you can make all sorts of different things. So make sure you subscribe, click that bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. The Blue Waves Baby Blanket has a small repeat pattern that just repeats itself over and over again. Once you get that repeat pattern, you're really often just making row after row until this blanket is done. It's super easy. One of those nice relaxing projects that you can do while watching a TV show or just trying to relax. This is going to be great. I will include in the video little tips and tricks that I did to help me stay on track. That way I didn't have to count every single stitch per row to make sure that I was staying on track. And I think they'll help you a lot too. So make sure that you uh, watch the video, see those tips and tricks because I really think that those tricks will help many of you. I will include at the end of this video a chart that will include multiple blanket sizes, approximate foundation row chain count requirements, and approximately how many rows you will need to make in order to accomplish the dimensions of that blanket. If you would like to figure that information out on your own, you absolutely can. I highly recommend that you check out my video here on how to meet blanket dimension requirements. I would also recommend that you watch this video that is all about how much yarn you're going to need in order to complete that blanket. If you watch that video, you will actually see this blanket making an appearance in that video, which is a really cool connection. The pattern itself, I will include in the notes section and the comment section. All you're gonna have to do is click on that link, print off the pattern, be ready to crochet with me. You do not need to have the pattern in order to get through this video. The video itself is very easy to follow, so it is not necessary for you to get the pattern, but it is helpful if you would like a reference point to check in on. All right, once you have the pattern or once you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're going to need in order to make this Blue Waves Baby Blanket. The materials that you're going to need in order to make this Blue Waves Baby Blanket is a size three weight lightweight yarn. This yarn is a Lion Brand Mandala Baby in the color Echo Caves. I was able to find this yarn at Walmart, but you don't have to use this yarn at all. You can actually choose whatever colors you want to use to make your blanket, really make it your own. You can actually choose a bunch of solids and then change up how you want the pattern, how you want the color changes to be on your own. I just really liked this color. If you want to use this color and are struggling to get your hands on it, I will include links to all of these materials in the note section and the comment section below so you can easily just click that link and get your hands on any of the materials that I show you. If you want to change the color, make sure you stay with the size three weight yarn. At the end of this video, when I show you the chart that shows you approximate chain count requirements, approximate number of rows to make per blanket, that is all based off of a size three weight yarn. If you want to use a size four weight yarn or a different size yarn altogether or a textured yarn, something different than what I am using in this video, I would highly recommend you watch the video I made on how much yarn will it take to make that blanket? I'll include that link in my note section, comment section for you to reference. That way you can know exactly how much yarn you will need in order to make that blanket. I will leave how much yarn you will need to make your blanket for that chart at the end of the video so you can know exactly how much yarn you will need to make the size blanket you want to make. You will need a crochet hook size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, tapestry needle, and two stitch markers. If you don't have stitch markers, that's okay. You can substitute for a paper clip or a safety pin or even just a scrap piece of yarn. Two scrap pieces of yarn will work just fine. So don't think that not having stitch markers will prevent you from making this blanket. We can get around that super easy peasy. I'm gonna use an orange color just to make it really obvious where it's at so it sticks out really well. All right, once you have gathered up all of your materials, let's dive right into how to actually make the Blue Waves Baby Blanket. 
This video is sponsored by Skillshare. But wait, don't skip this ad. Hear me out. Skillshare, I've heard about it from other ads. I've heard about it from other videos. I've seen commercials about Skillshare. But wait, Skillshare is actually pretty awesome to all creators, crocheters, and anyone trying to level up. I was checking out their Skillshare videos. They have thousands of videos. It is crazy. And I was realizing how much those videos connect with you, my viewers. I have people asking me all the time, Tiffany, how do I sell my crocheted items, especially when all these events are canceling, all these farmers markets are being pushed off. What, how can I make money selling these crocheted items? Boom, there are videos on Skillshare on how to set up Etsy accounts and make it work. Get views, get seen. There are videos on Skillshare about how to take pictures so that way your items look more appealing. How to set things up, how to like keywords and things that you can say that can make people more interested in clicking your item. On top of that, I get lots of newbie crocheters who are just picking up a crochet hook for the first time and trying to dive right into a project. And honestly, if you don't know your basics and you try to dive right into a project, I get a lot of people frustrated that I'm moving too fast or they don't know how to do a simple crochet stitch like a half double crochet or a double crochet. And that's okay, but before you dive into a project, you need to know the basics so that way you avoid frustrations and you feel more confident about what you're doing. And they have videos on Skillshare to get you there by amazing people too. The, the perfect video that I can offer for anyone that's curious about Etsy, a video I loved was one called Super Easy Ways to Make Your Etsy Shop Popular by Ashley Gahib. It was super awesome. Also, Crochet Basics for Absolute Beginners. It's called Crochet Basics from Skein to Scarf. It's by Connie Lee Lynch. She was incredible. You have got to check these out. And guess what? The first 1,000 of you, my subscribers, who click the link below, you get to try out the premium membership for free just by clicking that link below. So check it out. You're gonna wanna see how to level yourself up. And if you want to even check out their other videos to try out a different skill, a different creative hobby or craft, do it. They have some incredible things. My best friend actually gets on Skillshare. She's an artist and she is learning how to use Procreate. There's so many different ways. This Skillshare is meant for us. It is meant for creatives like us to level us up. Give it a try, check it out. First thousand of you, free trial membership. Take a peek. See what you think for yourselves. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's get straight to how to make that Blue Waves baby blanket. Okay, let's begin with a long enough tail so that way we can weave in our ends at the end of the project. Create a slip knot. Attach our crochet hook and we are ready to go. So the actual name for this crochet stitch is a sharp chevron crochet stitch. It makes a really beautiful wave in its pattern. In order to make the sharp chevron crochet stitch, it has a multiple chain count requirement of 14 stitches plus two. In my example, I'm going to make a small little swatch section so that way I can finish a row quicker, get to the next row, and be able to show you how to do everything much faster with a small swatch example. My swatch example is going to be 30 chains in the foundation row. That's 14 plus 14 equals 28 plus two is 30. So I'm gonna start with 30 chains. Find out how many chains need to be in your foundation row to meet your blanket requirement. And let's go ahead and begin. One, two, three, four, 27, 28, 29, 30. Great, once you have reached the very end of your chain, I want you to grab a stitch marker and insert it into the very last chain you just made. All right, we are now ready to move on to row one. In row one, we begin by making two double crochets in the third chain from your crochet hook. This chain right here that we have a stitch marker in, we're gonna count that as one, two, three making two double crochets in that third chain. One, two, because the first two chains actually counts as your first double crochet. So technically there will be three double crochets in that first chain. We are ready to move on to the next stitch, which is just one double crochet in the next three chains. One, 
two, three. If you need help with double crochets or you're not familiar with a double crochet, you can absolutely check out my video right here, which will help you to know how to do a double crochet stitch. The next stitch, once you've done three double crochets, next stitch is a three double crochet tog. We're going to yarn over, insert a crochet hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two loops, leaving two loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, insert our crochet hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook, leaving us with three loops, yarn over, Insert our crochet hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook, and that leaves us with this, four loops on our crochet hook, and three half accomplished double crochets. We're going to yarn over again, and pull that yarn through all four of the loops on our crochet hook, and this makes it so three stitches become one. That's a three double crochet tog. Now we repeat what we just did, but in reverse. We start with a three double crochet tog. One, two, three. Okay, got four loops on our crochet hook. Three half done double crochets. Yarn over. Pull through all four loops on our crochet hook for a three double crochet tog. Next, we're going to make one double crochet in the next three chains. One. Two. Three. And in the next chain, we're going to make three double crochets in that one chain. One, same chain. Two, same chain. Three, great, so those three double crochets, same chain. Now we're going to take this pattern and reverse it starting with three double crochets in the same chain. One, two, three. Next stitch is one double crochet in the next three chains. One, 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 and then we're going to make a three double crochet tog. One, two, three, there's my four loops, my three half done double crochets, yarn over, pull through all four loops. Great, now we're gonna take this section and flip it. One double crochet in the next three chains. One. Two. Three. And in the very last chain here, we're going to make three double crochets. One, two, and three, perfect. So when we take a second and we look at our work here, and here we go. So when you are looking at your foundation row chain and you're seeing how long it is, thinking, wow, this looks way too long. Go through your first row and you will see how your, found how your foundation row chain has really shrunk in this pattern. We are now ready to move on to row two. With row two, I'm gonna have you chain two. One, two, grab your second stitch row marker and insert it into the second chain that you made. 
so the very top chain that you just made. Turn your work. That chain two counts as your very first double crochet. We're going to make two more double crochets in that very first stitch. One, two, and then we're going to work one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then make a three double crochet tog. One, two, three, four loops on my crochet hook, three half done double crochets here, yarn over, pull through all four loops, and then we repeat three double crochet tog, one, two, three, got our four loops there on our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops, and then we're going to make one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Next stitch, we're going to make three double crochets in that same stitch. One, same stitch, two, same stitch, three. Great, there's our section, three double crochet tog, three regular double crochets, and then three double crochets in the same stitch. Now flip it. We're gonna start with three double crochets in one stitch, then do one double crochet in the next three stitches, and end with a three double crochet tog. Here we go. Three double crochets in the same stitch. Two. Three. One double crochet in the next three stitches. One. Two. Three. And then a three double crochet tog. One, two, three, yarn over, pull through all four loops, and then we repeat but flip. So we start with the three double crochet tog. One, two, three, yarn over, pull through all four loops. One double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and this is where the stitch marker comes in handy. We're going to make three double crochets in the very last stitch. One, two, Three, great, remove your stitch marker. There we go. We have just finished row two. And this is what we're looking at right now. See how it just beautifully builds upon that wave here? Always repeating. So three double crochets in the same stitch, one double crochet in the next three, three double crochet tog. Then reverse, three double crochet tog, one double crochet in the next three stitches, three double crochets in the same stitch. Three double crochets in the same stitch, three or one double crochet in the next three stitches, three double crochet tog. Three double crochet tog, one double crochet in the next three stitches, and then always you will end with three double crochets in the very last stitch. That's going to be the repeat pattern for every row here on out. Here's what I'm gonna have you do. I'm gonna do row three just so I can show you the importance of the stitch markers. So I'm gonna chain two, one, two, insert my, my 
stitch marker in that second chain that I just made. There we go. I'm gonna turn my work. That chain two counts as my first double crochet. I will make two more double crochets in that very first stitch. One, two, and then I will make one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three, ending with a three double crochet tog. One, two, three, four loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops. And now I will mirror that whole repeat over here. Starting three. And if you look very carefully here at the very end of the row, if I didn't have a stitch marker here, it would literally look like I had just finished that row. But in doing so, I would have missed a stitch completely. And I need that stitch that my stitch marker is helping me to identify to do my last three double crochets. One, two, three. That's where it will really come in handy. If you do not use these stitch markers, it is very likely that you will miss that very last stitch. And if you miss that very last stitch, you'll get to this last section and you'll do three regular double crochets, one, two, three, and then you'll be like, oh, I'm ready to just chain two and move on to my next row. And you'll end up getting your work to start caving in. And you'll end up being super upset because you'll have to end up taking out work and you won't know exactly where you messed up and you won't know how far to back up to. Whereas if you use these two stitch markers or two pieces of yarn that you can slip into that chain stitch, just so you can identify, woohoo, I'm here don't miss me, don't forget me, and you'll know, oh, there, there's my last stitch. I have to put something right there. That's where my three double crochets go because you will always end your row, ending every row with three double crochets in that second chain of the chain two. Same thing over here. When I come back over, I will end in that, that last chain right there with three double crochets. And that is the repeat pattern. I don't do anything special for my last row. I will literally just keep making this pattern over and over and over again, row after row after row, until I have met blanket dimension. You can choose to do something different. I do not add a border around my blanket. I think it looks beautiful without, I think it looks beautiful as is. And that is the sharp chevron pattern that you will do to make the blue waves baby blanket. Lastly, I want to show you the trick on how to do the invisible knot. So while you're working your project, if you start to notice that you're running out of yarn, you're crocheting, 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 and you're running out of yarn. Oh no, what do you do? A really quick trick that you can do is the invisible knot. So you take the last tail that's attached to your project and you have that yarn going this way. You take the new skein of yarn you want to attach to your project and have that yarn go that direction. Butt those up together. Take two fingers. Take these two strings. Wrap both strings, see both, around your two fingers. And you'll have the little tail come out. Take the little tail and have it go over your fingers and come out so the little tail is poking out towards your fingernails. Grab the tail, remove your fingers, and pull, and that creates a little knot right there. Let's move on to the other side. Two fingers, wrap your two fingers, take the little tail, go over the yarn, between the fingers, so that the tail is poking out towards your fingernail. Grab the tail, move your fingers, pull tight so there's a knot on that side. Now you have a knot over here, a knot over here. Grab this yarn, grab that yarn, pull, and the knots come 
in towards each other. And that creates a very strong knot that doesn't go anywhere. Take your scissors and you can actually cut your tails very close to the knot and that knot is not going anywhere. I've used this knot so many times. It's so secure and works great. And then you continue to work your project. So I'll chain two, one, two, move my stitch marker, turn my work, two double crochet in the first stitch, one, oh, there's my join, one, and two double crochets, and then one double crochet in the next three, one, two, three, great, okay, so now we'll go back and we'll look. Back of the work. You can't see where that knot is. You cannot see where that join is. If I look really close, there it is. There's the knot. There's the join. But it is completely camouflaged, invisible among the project. You don't have anything to come back and address. No weaving those ends in or anything. You just continue going through project and you don't have to worry about that join at all. It's called the Invisible Knot. It works fantastic and I really hope that it helps you. It's not required, but I thought it was a cool little trick that I really wanted to show you to help you out. All right, so what did you think of the repeat pattern? Was it easy enough to follow? Let me know in the comment section below. I chose not to add a border around this blanket. I really loved the look of the waves on the bottom, so I just left it alone. But if you would like to add a little something extra to the blanket, you can absolutely add tassels on all four corners. You can add pom-poms, or even if you'd like, you can add fringe at the top and the bottom of the blanket to give it a little something extra. Let me know if you choose to do so or what you would like to do to finish off your blanket if you would like to do something extra on yours. But for me, I'm gonna leave it alone. I think it looks great as is. I really hope you had fun making this blanket. If you did, you might also really enjoy my other baby blanket videos, which you'll find right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.